Breach, it's fair to say that many tribal decks want their commander to be an encapsulation of the tribe's entire philosophy, and to fit flavorfully with why you, the deck builder, picked that tribe in the first place. But as ever, form needs to be balanced with function, and often whole creature types are left without a leader, and known tribal staples feel played out. So what tribes do we want to see find their feet in this year of commander? Which already dominant archetypes do we think need fresh blood? Welcome to Magic the Flavoring, the Magic the Gathering podcast. We talk about all things magic, flavor, design, and law. I'm your host, Andy Mann. Hello, this is Nathan Cancel. And we are here today. We are going to be predominantly talking about uh, flavor tribal commanders. Uh, we're not really sort of going too deep on, on anything that's going on right now in magic, because honestly, not a lot is going on in magic that people aren't already aware of. Um, so yeah. we're looking to the future, the far future the inescapable and yet almost untangible future in which we can actually buy new product and sit down and play paper magic with each other and sling yeah. each other not on a webcam or on... Yeah, we're, 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 we're distinctly um, sure that life will return to normal. Um, I'll tell you what's not a really good thing. Um, and I know the last week we watched, uh, we, um, a couple of weeks ago we talked about stuff we are watching on Netflix. Um, yeah. I've, for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's media just doing this or not, but there's a lot of stuff about outbreaks, pandemics, end of the <laughs> world kind of things on at the moment. Yeah, and, do you know what? I've watched two films. I've watched two films. Sorry to cut in. One of them no, is, no, go ahead. One of them is Wreck which is the uh oh was it wreck or was it quarantine no it's quarantine which is the american mm. remake of wreck which is obviously about being quarantined with a zombie virus um spoilers for that film um don't watch it watch wreck and the other one was uh what's it called the oh my god what is it called it's got um lawrence fishburne in it and it's it's a it's a film is it the outpost they're in an underground society where you can't have a cold because the earth... Is yeah, 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 I know, I know what you mean. I you know, know what I mean? Remember. I can't remember the name. It was a dire film. Like, it was beyond dire. So, yeah, you're trapped in this society underground, and if you get a cold, you get thrown out into the snow and shot. But I was just thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> like, and they, yeah. all, the char- all the characters were going, they're infected, they're infected, and they've all got face masks on. And me and, me and Holly were just sat there like, okay this is yeah. not a feel-good film it was also just yeah, a shit film but yeah cause i've got a list of things to watch and like quite high up on them is uh, chernobyl because i haven't actually got to see that yet but um i found myself watching um seven seeds which is um an anime on netflix and it's basically about like uh the, and there's a meteorite that hits the earth and and we're seeing our protagonist like frozen from deep sleep and like basically they're trying to restart the world but we don't know how many years it's been or whatever and it's kind of like all ways different ways to survive and everything and even on that element of fantasy um, I'm, I'm just sat there going oh it's all just very why am I just watching all Doomsday stuff? <laughs> there's no, there's no good feel. Everything I'm, I'm watching is just kind of slowly encroaching on this feeling of impending doom. Um, so I don't know if it's deliberate or not, but there's lots of stuff on Netflix and Amazon and everything. This just seems to be a little bit more bleak. Um, yeah. but that might just be how the world is. I think that's why they balanced out with Tiger King. You know, <laughs> just to try and yeah. balance out the um, the media approach to the situation. That's true. Um, I've also been playing a lot of uh, Final Fantasy VI. The, oh, nice. Yeah, the, I mean, I've been playing what is considered to be the bastardization of it, which is the Steam remaster, where they change mm-hmm. a lot of the sprites to make it look like more modern. When, when they say yeah. more modern, just less pixelated. Um, I played Final Fantasy VI ages ago, and yeah, it's fucking cool. Because I've been watching, I was watching the Loading Ready Run uh, playthrough with Graham Stark when he was doing Final Fantasy VII, the original. Um, and obviously, the remakes come out, which I know you've been playing. And oh so yeah, I would. I mean, I like Final Fantasy VII, but um, it's not like my jam jam. Whereas Final Fantasy VI, yeah, really cool. And yeah, you've been playing the remake of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean, I th- I, I, it's no, it's no news to anyone that it's um, it's it's done the game a lot of justice. It's done the exact right thing of um, undermining the or subverting the expectation just enough to keep you in, interested, whilst also delivering on all the notes that you want. Um, I think it's it's a hard game to find fault with beyond the fact that um, obviously it's segmented. Like, but I, I I find it more exciting to know that you could pretend they could potentially branch out the game into different directions going forwards rather than just trying to f- do the same. Like, try to fit it all into one. Like, Resident Evil th- uh, Three Remake um, was considerably worse than the Resident Evil Two Remake purely because they seemed to try and rush it out and they didn't quite give it the care and attention. Um, Interesting. Because yeah, I've just I've same. just finished watching a playthrough of that as well. I thought it looked pretty rad. I think it looks good, but it, it yeah, it had a lot of um, it, it fell a bit short in terms of like story storyline depth and everything. Like I mean, I I, I listen to the the completionist because he plays games exactly how I like to play games, which is completely to death until you hate them and you don't want to play them anymore. Yeah, um, and he did both of them back to back. Um, and as a comparison, seven is just a little bit more um, 
um, it just does it just does the franchise a bit more justice. I cool. think um, three did. Well, uh, yeah, um, as, no, as we no spoilers say, but, for it because it's it's recently just come out and people are probably still yeah. through it. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Either, both games are still very much worth um, worth a look at, and there is obviously a big thing for remakes at the moment. Anyway, nostalgia, <laughs> nostalgia apparently isn't being left alone. Well, it's because all uh, of, all the people our age, all of the all of the nineties kids, like the kind of tail end of millennials, are now starting to get into positions where they can start pushing directions of of zeitgeist like a lot more. Uh, like mm. kind of Generation X is kind of you know. Their, their sort of the 80s nostalgia is still kind of there in cinema but like 90s nostalgia is now starting to poke through so yeah we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of that I think going forward mm. um, but that's mm. not the only thing we've been doing we've both been playing weirdly a lot of arena which is not something I used to ever do and in fact about two or three episodes I think I said that I didn't play arena and I was just playing paper EDH which I am doing as well over webcam um, but yeah I got a new laptop and I was able to download arena on it because my old one just couldn't support it and yeah it's surreal, man. Like coming from a place of not playing arena, like I, I think it's made me appreciate a lot of things about the kind of magic I do play. Um, mm. One of the main ones is is that, and this is genuinely without any cynicism or like being flippant to people who do play standard as their main sort of thing or enjoy standard. Um, I fucking can't do standard. I really can't get into it, man. Like it's it's really not my thing. Like, have you ever been a standard guy? Like, do you get into um, it? I- I used to, when I first started playing, because I used to, um, when I started, when I, mean, I probably got back into playing independently, so that was like buying boxes of Zendikar products, attending F&M drafts every week, um, building a deck from, obviously, uh, when, once you start bu- buying multiple boxes, um, which I re- would not recommend necessarily unless you're breaking them for, for, for um, packs and everything, because um, I ended up with basically a lot of like, a lot of good cards, like, especially during Zendikar, I had a lot of fetch lines and everything, so I was able to trade comfortably for a standard deck. Um, and I made a Boris um, Boris Bushwacker deck, but even then, having bought all of this product and getting quite seriously into it week by week, um, I didn't dip too much into the meta game. And after several months of, um, I mean, my, my biggest falling and failing with this was that I had to make a decision on whether or not I committed to Stoneforge Mystic or not. And I didn't think that the equipment side was worth it. And then obviously I was wrong. Um, and it's these kinds of things, as well as having to keep up monetarily with standard, that makes it a little bit more of a... Um, a difficult threshold to cross um i think if especially considered it's not it, it's hard to play standard casually i think in in some people's minds that 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 that, that opinion is there of where you can't just you can't just sit down and throw something together and play i mean mono red decks have always been that kind of go-to there's no flex spots for simple. there's no flex spots for a flavor pick for example or a pet card no exactly yeah, yeah. It's, the idea is you are playing competitively so you do have to kind of turn off that 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 whimsical side it, it also depends on the approach that you come have to the game um Whereas um, with Arena, because it's a little bit more available, you're not having to, you know, part money by part money to actual cards and build decks. And actually, have to go out in person to go and hunt out for the for the uh, standard environments. I mean, it's a little bit more accessible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, I tailed off very quickly as soon as my as soon as my deck rotated. Um, I kind of got rid of my fetch lands and um, and went <laughs> and um, crawled back into my hall of EDH. Yeah. Um, which is funny because even at that point, I didn't really play EDH. Then what I did is I started building um, a kitchen table environment where I built decks that didn't really have a format. Like they were basically heightened standard decks, so they were able to play in a standard format of only four, four um, up to four of a card and all that nonsense, but only of like the last like six years. It wasn't an extended format or whatever. I just kind of played sure. kitchen table, powerful kitchen table, yeah. which then obviously moved directly into EDH, which is why I still play that now. Um, well, the thing, the thing on Arena that's actually grabbed me, and I know it's done the same for you, is, is that they've opened up the, the Brawler's guild hall i don't know if that's what called yeah yeah yeah. so they've got the brawl format which used to only be available on wednesdays but now until the 21st of may they've opened it up just free to play any day and uh yeah i've been jamming some some brawl and it's it's interesting because i was never a big fan of brawl um i think as far as like edh light formats go and that's kind of condescending to say that anyway but i mean i think oathbreaker is a much better representation of like what you can do with another commander based format other than edh and i kind of thought brawl was a bit rubbish to be honest with you but as a 1v1 format i really enjoy it i enjoy the live totals i'm kind of digging having a 60 card deck like singleton 60 card deck and one of the things that's made me really appreciate is that because you can't again a bit like standard you can't have too many flex spots because if you're dealing within like a standard uh like legality especially if you're playing like just regular brawl and you've only got so many uh, sets to pick from if you're going into a strategy you need to pick the best of the best for that strategy but one of the decks i'm playing at the moment is a taser karlov deck which 
actually shares a load of cards with my Queen Marchesa EDH deck. They're both uh, in Ors of Colors. They're both uh, aristocrat decks. Like I've got Taser Karlovs in my EDH deck. I've got um, Woe Strider. I have uh, Seraph of the Scales. Um, you know, all these different kinds of cards that really sort of make, make a big splashy impact in, in that deck. And looking at the Ors of pairing, and seeing the kinds of cards that even in a standard environment all mesh together from like, you know, you've got the Ravnica set, so kind of at the tail end of it now, and you've got the, the new uh, Ikoria stuff coming through. Like the visual look, the flavor of Orzov across all the different sets is super strong. Like it mm. looks like visually, it looks like quite a coherent deck, which is something that a lot of standard decks or a lot of like high-end brawl decks don't really get to do because they're, they're pulling in from cards from all different sort of sets and worlds. And it's just, it, it, it just kind of made me appreciate, one of the things that made me appreciate more actually is that, you know, we, <laughs> I think we kind of give ourselves too much credit, credit sometimes as like EDH players where we craft this sort of visual aesthetic across all of our decks and we match the sleeves and the play mat and it all looks really cool and it's all us. But actually the people that make the fucking game already have this in mind. Like they already know that certain things have a certain aesthetic and yeah, yeah, just, sure. yeah, yeah I know. There's, yeah. Such a, there's such a thing as visual appeal um, and, 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 they, and they've coined that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just cause I play, um, I play, uh, so it's obviously it's an, it's an Orzov deck predominantly cause it uses a lot of the afterlife mechanic from, from the Ravnica set. So it's very heavy Orzov guild, but also there are cards I run like a uh, Dranith, Magistrator from the latest Aquarius set, the one which yeah. forces you not to be able to cast things from anywhere other than your hand. And even the yeah, Dranith so. uniform with like that kind of, you know, salt and pepper hair do with the human. And he looks like he could have been in the Orzov. Like if that card was in Ravnica as a kind of passing glance at the aesthetic, you wouldn't think it looked too out of place. And I just, yeah, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, that's, I mean, that's not really what we're talking about today. I know we've kind of, we've spoken about everything except for what we're talking about today. And um, what we're doing today, as I said earlier on, we're kind of looking to the future, really. This is still the year of Commander, even though everything's a, a raging bin fire right now. Um, and we will be getting lots of Commander products. We've only just had, really, one, which was the main Commander pre-concept for the year, which is usually the big thing with all the new Commanders or, or a lot of mm. events that we want. But this year, obviously, we've got a, a, a fucking truckload of other stuff that's coming through and a massive mm. opportunity for lots of new Commanders to kind of fill gaps and, and kind of patch over things that people want in their format because it's going to be printed directly into EDH. It doesn't have to worry about standard. And usually with these kinds of products, because even things like um, Modern Horizons, they still use that as a place to kind of do the changelings and they gave ninjas mm. a bit of support. And slivers and things and like that, yeah. Exactly. And yeah. I think one of the big things that I wish I had at my disposal is I wish there was a little, like a Star Trek like generator I can't remember what they call them. The yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, with all the, yeah. all the foods. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a fake nerd. Um, yeah, exactly. That was, one, like, no, that was one of those things I was like, it blew my mind as a kid. I was like, that is, that was one of the first things where I realized sci fi is bullshit. Because I was like, that is clearly not, <laughs> like, you can't just you magic can't just do food, that. whatever yeah, yeah. you want. Like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Even, <laughs> even J.K. Rowling just justified that you can't just magic food from anywhere. Yeah, sure. Come on, come on, Star Trek. So, what I, what I really want is I want like a, a printing machine that if I wanted to do a tribal deck, like a certain mm. creature type, is that I could just, you know, input like assassins and the machine would just print out like a, you know, like a, a middle of the road would work as this commander for your tribe. I don't need anything that's game busting and I can build whatever. I see, me, yeah, yeah. Like an interchangeable, basically. Yeah, basically. And there's a lot of tribes that I just think in Magic, which people really want to play and they just don't get the opportunity or they don't get to maybe do the deck that they want. So like Eureka, when that came out in the, the Tigers, uh, Shadow? Tiger's Claw? Tiger's Shadow? Tiger's, tiger, tiger's, uh, tiger's Shadow. Oh man, I've just put her in his deck. Anyway, Eureka, she's the ninja, ninja commander, because people really wanted ninjas. They put her in a commander product, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but they, there are still like huge swathes of, of, of tribes that don't get their due. And I kind of think it's a shame. Like, EDH is the premier flavour format. And that's obviously every, like everything that's up for debate, but I think that's kind of fair to say. Yeah. And, and, to, and one of the most flavorful ways that most people get into magic when they first start playing or when they kind of really want to like make something work is through creature tribes. Like it's a very recognizable fantasy thing to have your vampires and your werewolves and your goblins. And some tribes seem to get every fucking thing under the sun and get multiple commanders that could fit. Some tribes get one or two that are really good. Some tribes get a really good commander that in my opinion falls flat and then they tend to just leave other ones by the wayside and i'm just hoping in this year of commander they maybe give us some new blood they give us some new commanders to play with for 
tribes that already have established stuff, but they also give us those commanders like Eureka, where they can kind of go, people like this niche, we'll give them this one commander for this niche. Like, there's even a fucking Satyr commander now, Nathan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, Galia's. Galia's she, she was printed into a standard that. set. A standard yeah. set. I, played, I played against a Galia deck uh, yesterday, actually. A Brawl, a Brawl Galia deck. How many um, actual Satyrs did they have? Because in my head, there's fucking... I, genuinely, I think zero. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, I think they played none. I, I, I'm pretty Unless... sure they just played um, good stuff. Good stuff, um, Gruel deck. But um, yeah. The, the only way that that, command, that card makes sense in a standard environment, and they didn't just print it for Commander, is if Zendikar, we suddenly find out there's a hidden tribe of the Satyrs that live on fucking Zendikar. <laughs> don't, don't, we don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't give don't give them excuses to to, to, to make Zendikar worse. Um, but yeah, no, we so we, to, we, we, we need to bring it back to the brink and face <laughs> is not the way to do it. I mean, hey, look, I'm really happy they did Galia because it gives opportunities for people to build it right. And there's lots of there's lots of tribes which people will um, use other commanders to kind of patch that that gap. Like before, Eureka was the ninja commander. A lot of people used um, what's her name? Something. Bela. Bela. Yes. That's it. Well Bale of the night class. That's yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. They used her because her abilities kind of synced up with what. Yeah, the intimidate, the intimidate, yeah. um, right, yeah. that, that Lord of X giving thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they've kind yeah. of. I mean, you. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is why we do this. We'll talk about our thoughts in it. But they've they've released also a few cards which I think wizards. <sighs> Maybe if they just don't have the right standard set or the right products to put in certain tribal commanders. They've given us other cards in the past where they've gone, look, we'll give you these so you can do your thing. But they've, for me, they don't really work out. So you have cards like older cards like Conspiracy, which is the black enchantment where you get to pick yeah. up the blue version of that, which was Arcane Adaptation from Ixalan. Mm-hmm. And then, and this, again, no cynicism against people who like this commander. Like what you like. I'm not here to yuck your yum. But for me, more on the Boundless was a big slap in the face to tribal players. Like, it really didn't work for me as a a tribal commander in general, like the whole philosophy. Oh, it's a changeling, so you can have anything. But you can have anything with this weird fucking blob as your leader. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it just didn't work for me. Yeah, it does does feel, it is just generic tribal.com. And it did feel a little bit like, I get, because again, it's the damned if you do, damned if you don't. Obviously, I think it was an easy way for them to go, here's a, Here's a generic tribal commander for, 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 for the ones that are really, really obviously unbelievably obscure, as well as the ones that maybe just need a little bit of extra help. But because it doesn't do anything particularly interesting or definitely definit- dis- um, distinctly definitive to any particular tribe, it just does feel very bleh. I like, wish I actually it's, wish like the, it's like saying like doing like the Gila for warrior tribal. Like yeah. yes, okay, of course you can then play all five colors, but her ability doesn't actually do anything to do with warriors beyond making a warrior token. So it's not that's it's, true. It's not. I would argue, I it's, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's about, it's, I guess, the, thema- the thematics of it, obviously. Are quite, well, but this, um, this is the interesting thing, though, isn't it? Because you mentioned Najila, and you're right. On paper, she's actually a bit bland. But when you really look at what she does, where she puts things into an attack step, warriors want to attack. It's obviously quite an aggressive um, creature typing. Like, they don't have warrior cards, which, you know, kind of combo off with each other. I mean, <laughs> ironically, Najila is a combo deck in some builds. But do you know what I mean? Like, they yeah. do want things attacking. But then this is exactly one of the other sort of, like, bands of tribal commanders which i think exists where they thematically fit and on paper they tell their own little story but for just some reason just that little spark doesn't quite quite click and this is completely mm-hmm. subjective like fucking everything when it comes to like vorthosing stuff and magic unless it's like a literal they fucked this storyline up you know when you're talking about cards it's all to do with your own personal feeling mm. but, but i do think this exists um and we'll, we'll kind of talk a, li- a little bit about this throughout the, the episode, but you, you uh, wrote a bit of an outline for this episode where I think you, want, you kind of want to talk about yeah, it's more like in general, right? Yeah, because the way I look at it is it's, 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 um, it's, it, look, the, way I look, <laughs> the way I'm looking at the subject is um, specifically that, look, the way that we look at tribal um, and the way that it kind of resonates and the way that its effectiveness works, and especially within the process of EDH, um, you have certain things that... Um, uh, not necessarily different, but um, but certainly uh, change the quality of, of whether or not tribal can, tribal can work. Yeah. Um, I think, as you said to begin with, like the big the big thing is that you want your tribes to be um, relatable, um, and a lot of the reasons why people like will jump behind them is because yeah, as you say, you like you really like goblins or you really like zombies because you for some reason have a certain affinity to them, mm-hmm. um, and it's a lot harder to have say an affinity for say like spirits or something like that. So obviously you're gonna have um, they're gonna have more 
concentration in the more like typical popular tribes um and obviously the popular tribes typically that we know of um each color has as what we call the minor and major tribes so for green it's elves the major being hydras uh, red goblins and dragons yeah and then you've got um zombies and um what was the black one? Oh, i've got the black one vampires um, demons demons demons, demons. Uh, so yeah humans angels um then uh, merfolk and then say leviathans or krakens or whatever um as we're seeing but can you tell me andy man what the top tribes 3dh track are what's the most popular tribal deck for 3dh players do you think uh oh if i was just do it off the top of my head yeah i'm yeah. going to say the top tribal deck for just it, out of all tribal decks which one of those mm-hmm. tribes gets the most decks mm-hmm. elves um elves is fourth oh fuck off really what's yeah. the top what's the top three uh, dragons, okay, zombies and vampires. See now, yeah, well that makes sense, right? Because dragons and zombies, both of them are huge uh, tribes for magic, and they they have ample stuff. There are so many different and interesting zombie commanders that all do the sort of they all kind of skirt around the same issue, but they all have their own distinct flavor. You can build them exactly. in you can build them in monocolor, triple like tricolor and dual color decks. Like they've got all that going on. Dragons are obviously fucking infinite because they're a magic mainstay. Obviously, you get the big ones like you have like Sign of the Ur Dragon and the Ur Dragon. But you could do mono red dragons. You could do you know team of dragons, whatever whatever the fuck you want. Uh, Mataka, Mataka, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like there's yeah. so much stuff going on. And Blade like, Wing, yeah. You could do yeah. the um the the Boros pairing from Battle Bond. The yeah, so, exactly. Uh, Korvath, right Korvath, yeah. You could yeah, do all exactly. of that. But so did you say what was the third vampires? Yeah. Do you know what the you know what the telling thing about this is to me? Yeah, and um, this is one of the big things that I'm going to come on to um, go forwards. Is that uh, what did dragons and vampires get recently? Oh, they got the commander precons. Exactly, the eminence commander precon. So obviously that's going to boost those numbers up significantly. And you also got you've... Jarena Lichlord. Is it Jarena? No, that's Jarena. Jarena exactly. Yeah, Jarena. Yeah, yeah, Verena. Yeah. Verena. Yeah, Verena. That's it. You got the, yeah. the triple color zombie yeah. lords. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So obviously these are going to have because um, EDH pulls a lot of um, pulls a lot of information, and one of the b- things it pulls is like tapped out, and people upload their precons quite um, with a few different changes, a lot. Um, mm. So it will affect obviously um, having those numbers pumped up. Um, yeah, the reason, the main reason why I asked obviously is because typically the thing about tribal, um, especially when we're talking about creature tribal. Um, again, I'll come onto this a little bit later. That there are other ways you can kind of do tribal, but the thing about creature tribal is it does rec- require a certain type of build. Um, and the reason why tribal in general tends to be because throughout the history of magic we've had um, times where you've had um, onslaught, the onslaught block, which was a massively creature um, tri- tri- uh, tribal heavy. We had um, a set legions, which was every card in the set was a creature. Um, we've had lawin, where they did um, creature type um, and creature class tribal, um, and then obviously we've had various other tribal um, synergies going throughout magic as well. But the main thing you've got to rely on, obviously, that typically in a limited environment, your tribal formats, um, be it, say, like Ixalan, where you're relying on merfolk and pirates, are going to have lots of in- individual synergies low in the curve, which doesn't necessarily translate very well to EDH. You have, it went like Lord Effects, for example. We spoke about this on our um, White episode, yeah. how Lord Effects just do not translate in power level into EDH in an effective fashion. And obviously, the main reason why I think decks like um, dragons, um, zombies, and vampires are quite high up. Is because one that eminence ability, which will I'll, I'll talk will, will, will be a, a big point. I think we should talk about it in a minute. But um, it's not just that, but they have they work um, almost like in a almost like they kind of circumnavigate that. Dragons kind of get away with not being lower curve. They're big, big, massive hitters. Ur dragon lowering the cost of them automatically from the command zone or sign of the Ur dragon be able to cheat them out. I've played both types of deck. They don't play like normal tribal decks. They kind of play like battle cruiser decks. The zombie decks kind of almost run as like um, mid range kind of uh, um, synergy decks where you can't really get around the, the graveyard aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and then Edgar Markov is basically a dickhead, <laughs> which is like, why I mean, vampire decks because it I'm, plays I'm, with slightly different access. You have to kind of circumnavigate uh, that base principle of aggression. Because if you're playing, say, a Krenko deck, uh, because Kren- um, Goblins was number five on the list. Yeah. Um, Wizards being number six. I think Wizards being number six is basically because of Inala uh, or whatever it were not Inala. Um, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, 
The wizard precon. The, the, the commander. wizard precon. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that w- wizards are a weird one because I did sort of think when, when I was looking at this episode, I also looked at the precons, and obviously they're a big deal because they're recent and they they did a lot for the tribes that they they kind of boosted up as well. I mean, we're forgetting that Arabo was one for cats, and that was a godsend mm. for that. You know that archetype. exactly because it wasn't just Arabo. There was all kinds of stuff you could do in that deck. Um, but the Anala one, I kind of feel like wizards because they do come in all five colors, and because all right, maybe you're playing main blue, but there are enough enough other wizards that you could not do Inala and no one would turn their nose up at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Whereas I've literally, I've just gone into EDH rec now to see vampire decks. And obviously EDH rec isn't the be all and end all of like magic stats, but no. I'm, I'm looking at older mainstays and vampires is one of the things I want to talk about later on. You have Olivia Voldaren, who's like a big vampire commander. You've got um, Alenda the Dusk Rose, you know, all these different big vampires. You've got uh, Anna one, the Ruin Sage, people mm-hmm. who like the staples like a few hundred decks compared to Edgar Markov, which is in the thousands. Yeah, exactly. But obviously that's weighted massively. One. Yeah. But obviously this is, so the way I'm, the reason I bring this up is because um, if we're talking about tribal from the point of EDH, obviously that was Wizard's um, interpretation of a tribal cycle of commanders and a tribal cycle of commander decks um, and how those can work. And it's funny that out of those, one of them was arguably quite busted. I think Edgar Markov is a bit, I think that eminence ability is a bit too strong. And I think there yeah. is a certain um, word against that ability specifically because the mechanics a bit, it's inherently broken. It's like um, Olero. Like people don't like it, um, it, um, effects that you can't interact with uh, particularly easily. And well, obviously, it's, it's a, it's Markov, a Markov's ability does scale quite quick. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a planeswalker emblem which you don't have to earn. <laughs> you just have to yeah, sign up with the deck. Yeah. yeah. And people yeah. don't like those emblems, you know. No. Um, I think what could have worked better is that you get eminence ability when it comes into play you get the emblem so you don't have it without it already being played you have to play it first to get the obviously it wouldn't have worked for the Ur dragon they'd have had to design it differently um, but yeah, obviously this is the way that they had to kind of circumnavigate the effectiveness of, um, of tribal knowing that it does have certain shortcomings like elves deck being number four doesn't really count because elves kind of like a combo deck anyway you go comp- I mean I play a Marwin deck you go ham you go absolutely ham um, and you're not necessarily playing fair attacking in with two twos because that's not really a way that you can kind of win. Um, but yeah, the thing that's also sure. interesting, if we're talking like from um, from a design point of view outside of uh, like supplemental products, you have to be careful when you're building tribal into um, formats like standard environments because you kind of have to weight a lot of the cards towards them. Um, either, you're, either you're playing with for, um, tribes that have already existed and you're either reprinting cards that have already been printed or having to come up with new cards in a in 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 an environment where you don't have a lot of space yeah Um, and obviously then anything you do that's quite effective or or particularly powerful um compounds with every other card that's in the game as well um you need to make sure within the set itself it doesn't get too strong whilst also having enough support yeah this is why in this year of commander and they have all these supplemental sets like you've got the commander legends that's coming out we have pre-cons with every single set that's coming through like you know um they have a lot of opportunity to put these cards into play where they don't need to worry about the standard sets you know i mean the the uh commanders from the latest set of precons for uh Coria, even though they're set on a Coria, if you put some of those cards into the standard set it would bust it even more busted than it already is and it's already a mm. fairly fairly splashy set so yeah like you're 100 you're right which is why i think now's the time that wizards i say now's the time they designed these cards two years ago but like this mm. is the sort of section where they could have afforded to have put in some of the splashier shit and they've already released a few things that i think will be interesting i just hope my big hope and the reason why i wanted to do this episode with you is that i hope it's the tribal synergies that they really pay some sort of you know just respect to because it's it's a big mm-hmm. part of people's experience of playing this game mm-hmm. yeah i think one of the things i have to focus on um in that regard is they're not doing tribal synergies within um standard sets is that um you don't do cards like four mana three three so give all of your other vampires plus one plus one um, you do cards like, say, Eureka, where you get um, an interesting kind of trigger that requires you to... And obviously, ninjas like getting in for damage, and obviously, the ninjutsu ability works very well with her ability because you're kind of getting in certain navigating blockers. And that's what you were saying earlier about how you want the ability to have a commander that kind of plays into the theme of the tribe. Yeah. Like, you don't just want... Um, like, as much as... as, as like. So zombies are a great example for this because, as you say, all of the different commanders will do something slightly different and slightly more like like the nuance is different between them. Yeah, but it all feels like they are doing something to 
like as, as the character works within within the tribe, and and they um, and they work with the whole tribe as a whole. Like you don't, not yeah. every zombie goes in every zombie deck, but for every zombie that's out there, there's a commander which will make it like really sing because there's been yeah. so much support. Because that is one of the most popular tribes, you know, and you can have zombies on any plane, and it will make sense mm. to a certain degree, you know. Yeah. And it's really important as well to, to note that, say, having a card like Varina in was really great because then it added a whole extra colour to the, to the, to the uh, tribe. Yeah, we said before how sometimes yeah. adding more colours makes a card more powerful um, and it makes it too ubiquitous. Say, like, Tulane, for example, is a good example of a card that didn't need to be all three colours. Um, had you taken away one of the other colours, it probably would have made it a little bit more... Um, uh, a li- not less abusive, but it would have made it narrower and you'd have had to have a, bit, a bit more focus. Um, whereas something like Varina, it allows you to kind of move the tribe into areas it hasn't had a chance to work with before, like say things like um, anointed procession to double up your tokens, um, things like uh, etchings of the chosen if you want to do something like that. Like there's like, it, that kind of idea, and this is where um, tribal support going forward, especially in EDH, can be quite helpful because you can do um, say a green. A green, say a green red elf, or a green black elf, or a green blue elf, and allow then your and, and it has an elf tribal um, effect and, a, and, and an interaction, the synergy. And if you allow, and then it allows you you to spread all of all of your tribe into a whole new color and to do new things with it. Say like when needed with fairies, adding a bit of green to them, and it kind of adds uh, adds some flexibility and it allows you to kind of stretch the space a little bit more. Sure. So I wouldn't mind seeing that going forward. So I think that there's enough just generic your creatures get. A bonus and then you can tap three of them for a certain ability kind of thing sure I well i mean i know i know you used elves there just as an example to, to highlight your point point just to use a creature type but elves is also actually a good example of how they have done that because if you look at yeah you say you run your monogreen marwin elf ball deck and then you mm. know some people also run like things like rishkar and and whatever else there's a hundred elf commanders but you also then have things like reese the redeemed and mm. leaf who are in different colors like they're in you know white white green or black green and oh, I said they were still using green obviously but yeah they still have their own flavor and their own function whilst none of them are particularly dominant Reese the Redeemed might be like the most popular elf commander but again if you turn up with your Marwyn elf ball deck or any other mono green elf deck and say oh this is elves no one's going to look at you and go but why are you playing that one and not this one like they yeah exactly their own thing um, yeah yeah, my Marwin deck specifically has been interchanged. It started as a Fraley's deck, um, and then I've moved from... I mean, it, it, you can move to basically any of them. I've played with Yeva before at the head as well, depending on the, on the circumstance. Yeah. Like, um, obviously, it depends on what you want your deck to do. Um, and obviously, it depends on the density of your deck as well. Like, obviously, Elves, is, there's, Elves has got to a point where it's not necessarily solved, um, but it's close. Like, there are, there, there, are, there are very few Elves that you kind of like go, well... I'll, 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 I'll play this one specifically for this reason. Usually you play them because it's the better elf to play. It I'll, tell you, I'll, tell you what I think, I'll tell you what I think my sort of big signifier is to see whether a tribe needs either fresh blood or needs help, like in general, or whether it's been solved or not as like a deck archetype. Is if you take most tribal decks, if you just go on EDH rec and see like the, gen, the sort of generic builds that people do and see how many of those tribal decks also run things which are generically good for tribes so things like vanquish's banner icon of ancestry door of destinies all that kind of stuff Mm. if you see a zombie deck and say 40 percent of all zombie decks run icon of ancestry then you think okay it's fairly strong but not everyone needs to do it it's only the majority then you look at fucking snake tribal or ninja tribal and every single one of those decks runs an icon of ancestry. You need to maybe step back and go, oh, okay, maybe yeah. the tribe doesn't stand up on its own. Yeah, and there's those not things, enough diversity. There's not enough diversity in it. And again, like they only have so much space for like these builds, right? I just think it'd be fun for them to, to do kind of cool things. Um, I mean, are there any tribes which you would want to see? Like get something new or get a com- like a commander at all that's not just fucking Morophon? <laughs> like, do you um, know what I mean? I like... Yeah, I liked the idea of um, that, that we're getting more dogs, and I wouldn't mind like a, a hound, like a, a hound commander. I think would be quite good. But we've obviously had the argument of there being two different. There are too many different types of dog. Um, what I did like is I liked the um, the idea that came out with uh, I forgot what the name is the the um, Celesnia companion, um, the one that specifically cares about cats, beasts, nightmares. Oh yeah, that kind yeah. Of thing. Um, I liked that because it ties multiple. Um, creature types together as much as it irks me that werewolves and wolves usually get lumped together it does obviously help fuse those kind of things together i mean i don't for me i'm not looking in i don't want to see more um creature type um 
like like species type uh, tribal. I want to see more class tribal. Oh, really? Yeah. As right, much yeah, as there expand is, on that. Right. So basically, because obviously you've got a lot of like soldier tribals, quite a big thing recently. Knight tribals, obviously, been quite a big thing. Um, I was looking at kind of the the cards that seem to um, seem less that, that they seem to evoke more of a flavor. Um, and it's little things like say. Um, Azami, where you have to tap an untapped wizard to draw a card. The fact that yeah. wizards specifically do like knowledge and it plays into that. Or set and crows and protector um, is green um, is um, a druid um, laws. I mean, you can tap an untapped druid to add a green mana. Um, or you've got guilt leaf arc druid, where you can tap seven untapped druids to gain control of all lands. Target player controls. As much as that is a douchey non nonsense ability, those are the kind of things that I quite like. And this is why I like Lawin a lot because it, it, it allowed the blend in the format of not just having to worry about, oh, do I get, have I got enough goblins? You could go, oh, I've got enough warriors. And you have warriors across multiple different um, uh, creature types. Um, I think class support is quite interesting because we've got to a point now where we each plane has a very, dis or tends to have a very distinctive type of goblin or a very distinctive type of elf or whatever. And those kinds of things can be different but then the creature types always seem to do the same kind of things whereas i think the class has way more flavor and you can do way more with say i don't know assassin tribal than you yeah. could with just minotaur tribal ah it's funny you say so, that assassin tribal is going to be something i'm gonna gonna float your way i've got a few ideas for it but yeah yeah hmm. carry on yeah so the other things that i kind of want to look into apart from like say class tribal things like a uh, keyword tribal that's another one that i think is quite interesting what i like is that we've seen cards like arcades uh, where you can then suddenly um, walls as much as the creature as much as much as the ability is 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 the defend is the def the defender is the is the tribe obviously it's a walls deck and I like the fact that you can then do things like that where you you suddenly make a um, a subset of 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 creatures that were complete not useless uh, because you could play Doran or whatever oh but it did God. open up a massive deck opportunity. Do you um, know what like. I didn't even fucking think of this, mate. Sorry to cut you off. We're talking about yeah. like, oh, I, I hope this underrated tribe gets this commander, and oh, these these like this fucking creature types fighting for the scraps. We live in a fucking magic world where wall tribal, <laughs> fucking <laughs> wall tribal, has yeah. three viable competitive commanders yeah, in Arcades, no. Doran the Siege Tower, and fucking Pramacon the floating hologram. Oh, I forgot about Pramacon, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I fucking mean? Like, why is this fucking creature type got three commanders which people yeah, can play around with? All got, uh, no, yeah, it's, They're it's all way different as well. well. Like, oh my fucking yeah. god. And yet I can't get a werewolf commander to save my fucking ass. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I was wondering how long we were... No, 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 no. Werewolves are coming. I'm waiting for you to get out your interesting yeah. shit before I bore everyone with my rants. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing I was looking at is like... um. So, looking outside the box of what we think of in terms of tribal, because obviously, um, so we're, we're, obviously we're going to come back down um, to creatures, um, um, I'm sure. Um, but when, when my headspace started to go after that, because I started to look um, at things like, um, would you count like enchantress decks, for example? Yeah, like I, as I would consider that to be a specific, like a, a tribal, a tribe of, of sorts. Would you? Like, yeah, because I think even things like affinity, I would consider to be a tribe of sorts, like tribal. No, but now obviously... you're going down play styles. You see, this, that's no, 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 no. This is where this is specifically, um, obviously the the play, yeah, the play style of tribal, um, and this is where um where where the debate is, and this is where I think um I d I want the flexibility to be, is I don't want it just to, to be cumulative um advantage like affinity is like the more of a certain thing you have the better, the, you know, the, the better your advantage is with all the enchantments that all uh, stack up together. You don't want all your creatures just to be giving each other like plus one, plus one. You want, it, what, I, what, I, what, I ba what I'm asking basically is um, the reason why I would count those as tribal because it kind of sits into that typical creature tribal design. And I think that EDH needs to be moving away from your typical swing your creature sideways. Basically, it's the Boris argument. Yeah. Of try and give some flexibility to your play style and try and use creatures outside of, say like something like persistent petitioners. That's a great tribal deck, mm. and or a Shadowborn Apostle deck. That's a mm. great tribal deck. Like clerics, for example, are really interesting because you can move down that um, Shadowborn Apostle, um, what's um, Athreos path um, if you want yeah. to, or you can do the Ailey sacrifice thing. Those are the kind. This is why I think classes are a little bit more interesting because I think the problem with creature types um, is typically the way to go with them is that you do just do uh, combat buffs. You sure. Know? Like all your all your creatures get first strike. You know, or your or your zombies have death touch. Like, great, awesome, fantastic, don't care. Uh, See, that's interesting that you say that because I 100% agree. Like, I'm, I'm fully on board. I think just doing creature buffs for every creature mm. or just doing that, you know, pump out a token, go kind yeah. of thing is what makes a lot of these boring. But I, mm. I'm, I agree with you in, in mm. a completely different way. I actually, I, I think the flavor really is 
with the the creature types. And I suppose this mm. kind of does kind of. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a bad. I'm, I'm what I'm saying is like it's very. They yeah, are yeah. Very you want the flexibility. So, I mean, you want the flexibility. Yeah. So like, the worst, the worst of the worst offender of this is slivers because they have the sure. most variety out of any creature type, but all they do is the exact same thing. Yeah, but people like that because that's. But you know what I mean? So like you have too. the variety, but it's yeah. the exact same amount of variety. Yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean. Like, but uh, you know, I suppose yeah, people people find that kind of that mm. idea of them pretty cool. So like my whole thing with it, with it, with the kind of abilities which you still want them to be flavorful, but obviously you need it to work, which is why a lot of these kind of sort of second tier, maybe third tier um, tribes, even some of the, like, the big tribes, a lot of their commanders fall flat because their abilities don't scale with EDH as a game. And so mm. you make, so vampires are a perfect example of where you had super fucking sweet, flavorful commanders in things like Olivia Voldaren, who is a vampire that entrances humans over to your side and then bites them and turns them into fucking vampires. And you look at that card and you're like, my fucking God, whoever designed that, I hope they got a fucking holiday bonus because that is a sweet ass magic card for a vampire. You put that in a commander deck and it might be the most flavorful commander deck in the world. But as soon as it goes up against someone's Edgar Markov deck, it's lacking a color. It doesn't, it's not aggressive enough. It's not competitive enough. Mm. Then you look at you look at Edgar Markov as a card, and to its credit, Edgar Markov is the progenitor of vampires on Innistrad, and he is the one that kind of like fortified them as a species on that plane when they started. So what does this card do? It creates vampires, and it mm. gives them one one counters. It buffs them up, and one one counters weirdly for a, a, a tribe that's predominantly in Mardu colors is quietly one of the most plus one plus one counter heavy tribes in magic like there are so many <laughs> card, vampire cards across all different sets that deal with uh, one one counters so it, on the face of it it looks like it should be doing what it's doing but it's what i was saying before where that little spark just doesn't seem to really grab no. into it not in the same way that things like olivia do and the thing yeah, it, like, it doesn't have texture no it That's just it just doesn't and there's like there's other vampire cards which you can look at where you see what Edgar Markov does and you think, yeah, okay, on the face of it, that's really cool, but why doesn't it spark for me? And then you look at something like Bloodline Keeper, which is a, a four-drop 3-3 three, three vampire, and it's one of the classic vampire cards. It's one of the big parts of the, the Edgar Markov deck, but it's a flip card for a start, which the transforming vampires are obviously the most interesting because cards that transform are brilliant. Um, and it creates vampires. You tap it to create a vampire, then you transform it when you have enough of them. And on the other side, it buffs the vampires and you can still keep creating them. And it tells this whole story arc in a way that's not busted, but it's also not shit. And it works for what you need it to do. Now imagine mm. if you turned Bloodline Keeper into a Mardu or a Rakdos vampire. You stick Legendary on it, and maybe it has haste, so you can tap it straight away. So basically, if you turn it into a completely different card, is what I'm saying. If you make it, if you make it, if you make it better, it's better, right? If you make it legend, <laughs> if you make it a legendary version of what it is already, but you put it into the colors where you can start branching out. Imagine mm. if that was your commander. Like, I mean, we're not game designers, obviously. Like, that could be totally fucking busted. But I think you would see so many more people playing that version of the deck, even if it's necessarily worse than the Edgar Markov decks, because mm. the people who really love Edgar Markov and what it does and really appreciate what it is and by the way, I do as well. The Vulcan Bargara is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. The people that would keep playing that deck would be the people who really like it. And the people who play the Bloodline Keeper deck or a new Olivia would play those instead. And then they'd all have a fucking house party over how much they love vampires. I fucking love vampires. But I don't mm. want to build the Edgar Markov deck. And I don't want to build yeah. anything that... I mean, I, like, I play a lot of EDH. Like, some of my decks are lower powered, some of them are more powerful. I want my yeah. vampire deck to fucking rock, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's kind of why I think. Well, I think that's why inherently, like Inala is like a more a more interesting uh, commander than um, Mar Edgar Markov because Edgar Markov, well, no matter what vampire you make, oh, you get a one one. Yeah, Inala, you get double, you get double, 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 double wizards on whatever wizard you play, and your wizards are probably going to be interesting. Yeah, you're a dragon. Okay, everything's a little bit cheaper, and then with the cat deck, okay, everything just gets a little bit bigger. Like that's, I guess that's the that's the point. Is it's like you know, are you offering generic abilities or are you offering something that's a little bit yeah. more? in keeping with the theme of the tribe, not just making that tribe I suppose. Um, I suppose the thing is Arabo. Yeah, Arabo is an interesting one because it, it gives a commander which has cat support on it. But unfortunately, like Edgar Markov, it's like exactly what we're saying, it doesn't do anything with the cats that's particularly interesting. Like Edgar Markov doesn't do anything with the vampires mm. that's particularly interesting. Yeah. Look at Hungry Lynx, for example. Yeah. Hungry Lynx is one of the most card. flavorful cat cards ever. Yeah, super cool. 
But yeah, I guess and this is actually leads me on to like this idea of nuance. Like, because one of the big things that annoyed me about um, tribal was the fact of tribal. Like, they card type tribal rather than the the, the the idea of tribal. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed because I know that it's it's basically it's, it's been made defunct. They're not going to bring it back again because it it was a bit too complicated. Um. But what I liked about this was this idea of being able to take spells like enchantment, sorceries, instance, and adding this flavor of a tribe onto them. Like one of the things I really like is not from this world, which is the Eldrazi, um, uh, one of the Eldrazi instant um, tribal cards. And it's basically seven mana. Um, and if you were cast it on a creature that has seven or more power, it costs seven less. You can cast it for free. And it basically um, gives, gives the creature um, hexproof. Um, and it basically is like a free, a free, a free hex proof on your big, on your big dude. And what I like the idea of is it's a big, fuck off, massive seven mana instant spell that's basically just like you know, like a, a emerge on scathe or a god's willing or whatever. But the fact that you, um, if you cast it on something huge, it basically doesn't cost anything because it's using eldritch ability. Um, that that idea is amazing. Well, Boggart shenanigans, for example, yeah, two and a red for an, a a, gob, a tribal enchantment. Um, so it's a goblin itself and it sits in play whenever a goblin um, leaves the battlefield um, so I think it might be I think it's going to be dies whenever a goblin you control dies it does one damage to a um, target opponent uh, amazing and the, the idea of that you get an enchantment that has a theme of a goblin to it um, these are the kind of things that I really like so it's a shame that they didn't carry it on so yeah. I feel like these are the kinds of things like with legendary sorceries that can give the other, other th things other than the creatures tribal um, importance relevance and synergy um, so I think that that's that's a big thing I think they miss. And I, as much as I don't think they'll bring it back in Commander, I think it's one of the few places you could bring back Tribal and it not feel out of place. Oh no, 100%. Um, I, I and I really hope I really hope going forward they do do some of this because it's little things like the Bound in Silence uh, being able to search out a, pass a pacifism effect with your Rebel searches. It's little synergies like that that make a Tribe feel really cool because you're not just playing your, your Rebels, but you've been able to go and search a Rebel spell. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that I think is missing sometimes with. Um, with, tri with tribal synergies that are built around more limited and standard environments um, rather than obviously the more, the, more, the more explosive and more, you know, complicated formats, I should say. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I, well, it's, not, it's not just that. It's not just about it being like more explosive or, or being splashier. It's that fact that I think if you ask a lot of standard players, like they, they could tell us commander players that they want us to get our fucking commander out of their standard a little bit. Like I think these, no, no, I completely I agree. Think, I think these supplemental yeah. sets are, are going to do a world of good for a lot of people there is a, there is a, a huge voice and it's actually one that i think is a lot of merit to it and i and i do like i do agree with up to a point there's lots of people that think that what's you shouldn't design for commander at all and that instead they should just do their sets as usual and as as we've been doing up until maybe the last two years we'll see which standard cards we'll see which limited cards make the cut for commander in terms of what we need for our format and we'll build around them and that that actually is some more interesting builds i think that's mm. that's fairly valid i just kind of think the the fucking genie's out of the bottle of that now yeah. well, like, the problem with that as well is that then you stop building cards for casual play if yes. you just build every card to ignore edh to simply for standard you're not building cards that you can play at a kitchen table you know yeah um so i feel like you can't and also, they're they're very much on they're very much under the impression awareness that EDH is one of, if not the most popular format to play Magic. Yeah. So if they'll be doing themselves obviously a, a misservice, um, and I think especially with the way that they've been designing some standard sets, you could be pushing people away from it. That might be a big reason why EDH is more popular because it's just a general increased feel bad on how like standard formats are feeling. Maybe, and this is coming from someone who has um, a very um, um, ob um, sub ob ob subjective opinion because I don't necessarily play. Um, but I, f from what I can tell, like I think, obviously it doesn't. EDH offers you a bit more freedom and and, and, and fun. So <laughs> I think if, sure. if, if everyone's feeling well, a bit um, under the weather and power creep and everything, like, I think uh, I think there's there's two answers to that to that whether you're right or not. Either you are right and standards in a bad place right now, which is very likely, although we don't know that because we don't play it. Or <laughs> standard players are potentially shock horror maybe just as whingy about their format as EDH players are about theirs. And maybe it's, yeah, it's shocking magic again, players in magic general people, and not a format like thing. To complain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could <laughs> be that. I think yeah. maybe it's that because there have definitely been, I mean, it's, this is completely off subject. I actually kind of, I'm disgusted with myself that I just use that as a get out of jail free card. Cause it kind of means that whenever players are unhappy with their format, you can just kind of go, Oh, magic players win all the time. And there are some very valid criticisms about all formats pretty much always. Cause there's always room to improve. I just, I just kind of think that maybe, yeah, if we all just fucking 
chilled out just a little bit and didn't jump mm. on things as soon as they were printed, then then maybe you know the magic world would be a little bit of a better place. Or oh, it'd be a fucking hell. Fun. Well, it could be that or a fucking hellscape. <laughs> I don't really know, but there we are. Uh, um, right. We okay, don't know. So, yeah, go on. Wait, so, so I've got, got a couple of basic two. I've got two little questions, basically. All right. Um, one, how do you feel about things like uh, the kindred cycle, um, things like Heaven of Souls, which basically just help every every tribe out in an incremental fashion without particularly being specific to any particular tribe? Um, so I think about those in the same way that I think about things like Icon of Ancestry or yeah. Rapture's Banner and all that kind of thing, which is I don't hate them because they, they give support to tribes and they are very useful, especially if you're playing in, say, colours which you need a boost. But that's yeah. exactly it. I would treat those the same way that you treat sort of like off-color draw spells or artifact draw spells for colors that don't have card draw. Yeah, I think a, the same with like yeah. shared animosity or mana echoes, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that, where you're probably just using it as a generic powerful effect. It's not if necessarily... You, if you need a tutor for your... I mean, we're in green for shared kindred summons, so obviously mm. this isn't true because you have other things as well. But say if you, if you need your efficient tutor effect to get you out of a jam, but you're playing a tribal deck, you should probably play kindred summons over, say shared summons which is the other one right yeah. that's the five mana one um yeah but you maybe but yeah. shouldn't play over genesis wave no if you're playing an elf deck you probably don't need it but if you're playing a oh, exactly. deck yeah, yeah. or a cat's deck kindred summons might be something that you want to consider yeah. playing yeah that's yeah. what i feel yeah absolutely yeah yeah so, so yeah basically the only other thing i had left was i'm um, looking at kind of like favorite command like favorite tribal commanders of, of, of like recent recent times um, mm. and why i like them and then what i could potentially and why i kind of like them what i would like to see from that similar kind of thing going forwards um the first one being varina the fact that they added an extra color to um to a tribe that didn't necessarily have it already and offered a lot more opportunity for flexibility i think again tribal is one of the few things where i think adding extra colors is a good thing um i had kamina as well um is not necessarily the best merfolk deck um, commander, but I think that it does multiple different things, like being able to draw cards, have unblockability, all that kind of nonsense. It just does a lot of different things. That's the kind of thing that EDH is, is the one won. where you tap Merfolk to make things unblockable and all that nonsense. Yeah, all that, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's very good. I can't remember what the middle ability is off the top of my head. One second. Um, the thing, yeah, well, the thing with Merfolk is that they're one of those kind of. I mean, they're one of those long staple tribes that kind of aren't necessarily the most explosive at any given time, but they're always very, very good. A bit like elves, really. And yeah, mm. Kamina as a commander, there have been lots of merfolk commanders that do interesting shit that you can run as your tribal commander, but he was the one which when if you really want to lean into it, then here's what I do. And I'm not just, you know, you know, I'm not just that one effect of yeah, uh, exactly. Merfolk. You yeah. get a Merfolk. What what does he do? What's his thing? Yeah, so you, so you can tap what tap another to um, make him unblockable. So you can mm -hmm. go Voltron route and get yeah. him big and pumpy. Tap three to draw a card, so you get yourself a bit of card advantage. Tap five to put a plus one plus one counter on each Merfolk. So not only you have anthem effects, you have card advantage, and you've got an ability to go tall as well as go wide by just going in pan with him. Yeah. So it's that, opp that opportunity, that ability yeah, to get really like multiple it. directions. I, I think um, it's really good. And if they use that as a standard for, for other kind of uh, cards going forward, I think that's a, yeah, that's a really good place to be flavor-wise. Flavor um, yeah, the other one I had, which is weird, which is I, I, only found, I only really thought about it, was Bruder Clad Mere Tribal. Oh, sure. Because, because it, not, it, it doesn't necessarily boost your Mere, but the fact that all Mere do something better incremental by having more of them, whether it's propagation, things like Mere Battle Sphere, this, like if you look at all of the different mirrors, apart from the ones like Mir Galvanizer, which you obviously gives plus one plus one or nonsense, they all have like tap abilities and, and copy abilities and all this nonsense. You can go kind of a little bit crazy, um, and the fact that Brudeclad itself is is, is your, the only legendary mirror you can play. I thought that say I was like, man, if you didn't already play a Brudeclad deck, I'd be like, yeah, actually, I might build a mirror. Because well, well, I've been wanting to build a mirror deck for years, and I yeah, hadn't even thought about well, it until no, today. Do it because it will be a different build. I mean, my Brudeclad deck, weirdly enough, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a tribal deck because I think tribal decks, for me, if you're saying tribe as opposed to theme, um, yeah, or if you're for just generic synergy, it kind of does need to be shared creature types. But the my Brudeclad deck, I made a decision when I built it, is that I didn't want to include any cards that didn't create artifact tokens for Brudeclad. So mm -hmm. everything's an artifact token. Not all the creatures are artifact creatures. And I have cheated slightly by putting Trading Post in, which technically makes a goat, but I use the other abilities anyway. Um, so yeah, so you could technically say that my Brudeclad deck is artifact tribal as opposed to mm -hmm. artifact synergy. Um, but yeah, no, I think- Or it, you could say it was token tribal, you know? So yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what, another thing is like looking at um, it, things like, power four or greater tribal and things like that obviously we're looking at creature types 
rather than say, as you say, well, like, that is that is where my sort of line I think goes. I, yeah, I think, and I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think the problem obviously is that when it comes to creature types, there's only so much that you can do with creatures to make them viable and competitive. I think obviously Boris is a good example of how just relying on the combat step isn't a great way to have diversity across your playstyle. Weirdly enough, sure. um, so yeah, I guess the big thing is as go for is is just looking to see ways to expand tribes into areas that they haven't necessarily been before. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm, we're, we're running a little bit out of time. I say that, we're not, mm. we've got all the fucking time in the world, but in our arbitrary like, <laughs> clipping of like, how much time we have left, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two tribes, which I want to see. I mean, I've already spoken about vampires, so yeah. I, wanna, I want to see better vampire, not better, that's a fucking wanky way to say that. I want to see different vampire tribal commanders. That's the new blood I want to see. And I think okay. we might get that with Baron Sengir. We know we're getting Baron Sengir in. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So we might. Yeah. Do, they might not do vampires with him. And they we might, might just... get feral vampires on Zendikar. Who knows? We might get yeah, yeah that would, the, the long-awaited black Zendikar. green vampires. Fucking hell! Do you know what? I would build a green black deck. Of, of vampires. Do you know what I thought? This bounty guy that we saw, the hunter from um, from um, Ikoria, he could have very easily been a vampire. You could have flexed him into a being a vampire kind of. Sure, I kind. guess, but then he's obviously yeah. Ikoria, isn't it? You could have had that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I yeah, that's that. that's my new blood is the vampires, and then the two these two tribes are tribes that I've always loved, and I think need a a commander which you know raises all of the creatures and not just keep it super narrow. Because the problem with some of these commanders is that whilst you could technically say that they're a tribal commander. Because they're so narrow within their own tribe, they kind of just make it, oh, well, no, it's a commander with these cards instead of just the tribe itself. Mm. So um, one of them's going to be werewolves. Fucking spoiler alert. I'll do that one last. My first <laughs> one, and you actually mentioned it earlier on, is assassins. I mm. fucking love assassins. Very close to ninjas. If I had mm. my way in a perfect world, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and tell whoever was about to design assassins and or ninjas, just make them the same fucking thing. Or like, you know, do, a, do an errata. We're all not we're all ninjas or assassins or the other way around or whatever. Yeah. Um, I really fucking love assassins, and I had a, a, a sixty card uh, kitchen table deck of assassins, which was blue black, and it had uh, had royal assassin, had agent of fates, it had uh, scarblade elite, and the thing that a lot of these had in common, and actually the whole deck kind of took on, was it was a, a tap deck. It was tap and untap. Agent of fates, royal assassin, scarblade elite, and uh, the legendary kiku knight's flower which is a, a, a black black for a 1-1 one, one human assassin. And it has uh, two black black tap. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. And the thing that all of these shared is that they relied on things that were tapped. Either the creature it was destroying was a tapped or it had its own tap effect. And that kind of felt very sort of like that was a nice thing that all of the tribe shared for a tribe that didn't really have anything else going for it. You then have more recent assassins which are into the battlefield or have blink synergies so you have uh massacre girl is obviously like is a blinky commander she comes in the mm -hmm. battlefield she board wipes everything and then the other one i thought was quite interesting was a chart of the silencer which is the demir one where when she attacks she's unblockable she attacks in and then she gets shuffled back into the deck but mm -hmm. if you blink her with her ability on the stack or if you flick her or, or bring her back to your hand or whatever then that doesn't happen and you still get her like her effect right so all of these different things could kind of work with blink decks and like, you know, cause you can blink other people, uh, opponents, creatures, or you can tap and on tap things. So I was yeah. if you could have an assassin legendary assassin, probably Dimir colors that would probably work the best. Although uh, there are red assassins as well, but whatever. Mm. Um, so you could do Grixis, but it wasn't, it wouldn't be something like all assassins get plus one, plus one. And it would, no, I've got an idea. So, got an my, idea. so my idea is this, yeah. And obviously, this is me doing this on the fly. I'm not a card designer. But it would be a five-drop five, five drop assassin, just to make it fairly costed, or a four-drop, maybe. And it would be, you know, something like Colorless Grixis uh, for, like, a 2-2 a, a two -two or a 1-3 assassin. And it had two lines of ability. So it had a keyword, which would be haste, so it'd be hasty. The first ability would be tap this creature and destroy target. Uh, creature on it or mm. destroy target tapped creature that probably would be better and the second line of text would be all other assassins have tap destroy tap creature so you don't need to necessarily play a whole bunch of like tokens you don't need to swamp your board with a whole bunch of assassins you could just keep it to like a, a tight 
20 to 25 creatures because a lot of the problems with tribal decks is that you need to have like 30 to 40 of the same creature whereas with this one well, yeah you need a saturation level yeah with this one you just need a few good ones that you can get out reliably and then you can play the whole rest of the deck with bounce effects so you can tap your assassin and then you can bounce it to bring it back so it's like ready for the block or you could have it where you can play your charters and your massacre girls so you can bounce shit you could have tap and untap effects as well so you can tap things down to attack in or tap another person's you know creature to be able to destroy a core assassin you know all these different kinds mm. of things the agent of fates i'm not going to go through the whole thing with agent of fates but it's got lots of triggered abilities when it gets targeted to spells and it works really well with a, a, a cipher card called hidden strings from uh, return to ravnica so you can have all this kind of stuff going on. And I think it'd be a really nice way that you don't have to keep attacking them. You don't have to swamp the board of tokens. It just, you know, you can have your board state and it's just all these assassins sniping around and dealing little bits of damage and tapping and untapping. And mm. create a, it would create a play experience that wasn't just swamp the board with vampires, swing in with your vampires, you know? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I kind of ranted on that one. Did that, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it, yeah. yeah cool. My, my go-to was... Um... That you'd want obviously a tap ability to be able to destroy a creature. But yeah. what I thought about is instead of it being destroy a creature, what about obviously you want situations where if there aren't any creatures in play, what does it do? Yeah. Um, it taps to do um, one, um, does uh, two damage to each opponent, or like one damage to each opponent. And then their next spell costs two more to cast, so it impedes them, like the players. And then oh. it has an ability return target assassin you control to, your own, to, to, to its owner's hand to untap target creature. Oh, that'd be quite good. Yeah, no, yeah. So you'd have it. a way to protect your assassins if they get targeted by bouncing them back to be able to tap to untap your other assassins if you need to, or you can untap itself to then make your to to attack your opponents again for the next one. So you could have it that say maybe tap um, deals one damage to each opponent each. Then the next play they the next spell they cost costs one more, and you yeah. can stack it. So obviously the next it taxes them bit by bit. So it doesn't just affect. Um, so obviously your other assassins are the ones that are going to have to deal with the creatures, and she rather goes for. Um, or I assume it's a she. I, I don't know why. In my mind, well, it's a yeah. she. I think most of the most of the legendary assassins are are women, women characters. Mm. Yeah, I like the idea of it. Yeah, obviously you want something that, that when you look through the rest of the cards works with all of them, but obviously offers a new direction to take them in rather than just more of the same. Sure. Um, no. But I, yeah. Okay. I like what's, what's your idea for a werewolf? Well, I don't have an idea for a werewolf, man. This is this is the thing. Like, it's such a hard one because you're dealing with transform abilities. So, like the the werewolf commander that we got. Uh, was what color? What, what colors are? What colors is it? Oh, oh what colors? What colors do I want? Or what colors do we get? Yeah. No, wait, 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 who says you're gonna get one? You're not getting one, Andy. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is, you like? Well, we had so the the one that we had before we get into that is Uruk of the Kralin Horde, which was the Gruul yeah. legendary from uh, Shadows of Innistrad, and he just didn't seem to. He pumped things up, and he big, had a transform big boy. effect. Yeah, big boy makes things bigger. But nothing on him. He's he's the fucking alpha of like the Kralin Horde. Yeah. Werewolf yeah, it should have been Huntmaster of the Pals. And he doesn't have any werewolf or wolf synergies. Like, fucking bollocks. Anyway, um, the colours I would have a werewolf commander in, if I could have whatever I wanted, would be Jund, probably. So I could play the... I know, we've already spoken about this. I know. Oh, uh, yeah, so you could play the OG ones. Yeah. Well, you play the OG ones, and you could also play a lot of the um, Golgari Garrix, because he's got a lot of wolf synergies as well. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think that would flavor yeah. in. And... I was looking at, so the same way that I did with um, Bloodline Keeper and Lord of Lineage for the vampires, I was looking at uh, Greer Reach Bandit for the werewolves. So Greer Reach Bandit is a, is a rare human rogue werewolf, <laughs> which is just a, such a cool creature typing. Um, and it's two, two and a red for a 3-2 human rogue werewolf. Has haste, has the usual werewolf thing of at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, transform Greer Reach Bandit. And on the flip side, the Vild and Pack Alpha, the werewolf side, it has, uh, whenever a werewolf enters the battlefield under your control, you may transform it. So it's kind of one of the big downsides of playing werewolves, is that although you get to double up on your cards, although you get big splashy effects, the transform is quite clunky, and it's quite difficult, and obviously it's yeah. easier, because by and large, it's considered that the werewolf side is more potent, even though that's, you know, the whole play about mm. werewolves is that both sides have ups and downsides. I think something like that, not that, because that's a bit too... But new. something like that. You would have yeah. something like... Yeah. Where the pack alpha would be something like... It'd probably look a lot like Uruk of the Kralin Horde, but then it would also have a line of text that would say, um, pay two, transform all... You may transform any number of creatures. And then if you just left it at creatures and not necessarily werewolves or wolves, you can, then you can flex it. Punch out into other transform creatures, yeah. transforming vampires, wizards, whatever. And that would be a nice way of doing a tribal commander, which people would 
gravitate for flavor reasons towards werewolves, but then yeah. people that wanted to do their own thing or maybe just have a pure gameplay perspective and thought, well, you've got fucking Delver of Secrets and all these mm. other things that are much better. But, you okay, can yeah. put those in as well. You know? So you want a more so you want a, gener- a more generic transform tribal commander rather than something specifically referencing werewolves. I want I think that's the di- I think that's the thing that would be Ooh. difficult is because you the problem with the, with werewolves is you have the flip the printing issue of the flip flipness of I su- I suppose what I would do then is maybe say pay pay two tap pay two transform any number of target creatures you control unless it's a werewolf in which case you pay a red okay right okay too much too much <laughs> no it is too much i'm over for, i'm overthinking it but yeah, yeah so maybe, I mean, yes, I, maybe but i would yeah, i would so say that's that that's much it? better that's that's yeah. still in keeping of being a tribal commander because you yeah. can still have all your other buffs from your other vampires buffing your commander up whilst exactly. it's still, like mushes plus together. plus there are so many werewolves that give bonuses to each other anyway that yeah. you don't necessarily need Inner it to do that generic like that. thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah and also all rick did the whole old give a creature bonus the thing that they wanted is they wanted it to interact with the thing that made werewolves different which is that flip ability yeah. so you want your tribal commander to be more in keeping with that theme of flipping rather than just oh it's it it replace birds with werewolves and it gives them plus one instead you know sure. that kind of thing yeah no, no i know what you mean i get what you mean i, I don't necessarily think it's gonna happen <laughs> um i, 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 I do i mean i thought i i've said this so before i thought... bet now that by the end of the year there'll be a werewolf commander yeah all right fiver all right okay i was gonna say i was gonna say 10 but okay yeah all right five is fine I'm not, dude, these uncertain times, I want to keep as much yeah, money, bad, money you know, as I can. <laughs> you know? um, sure, I think there will be. And, like, I, I ragged on Morophon at the start of the episode. I, If people play Morophon, I know there's a couple of people in our playgroup that have cat decks that play Morophon because it's subjectively mm. better than a lot of the cat commanders. And if that's your jam, that's your jam. I just kind of thought, I mean, it was literally, a, it has a five-color commander that had a colorless border. And to me, that just said it all. <laughs> like, without yeah, saying much I more. I was like, mm, yeah. okay. So, so yeah. It's all the colors, but it's basically none of the it's colors. It's basically none yeah. of them. I would have rather it looked more like a ditto as well. Like, if they really wanted to do something that was just an amorphous blob. Could it possibly look more like a ditto? It's basically a pink blob. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> like, not, though, because they've given it really specific features, and it creeps me out. I would rather it's It reminds a me a lot of um, the Spirit of the Forest from uh, Princess Mononoke. Yeah, freaky as fuck. Yeah, are you kidding yeah, like, yeah but there we go yeah. so that's that's it then i guess that's that's our little kind of deep dive down into uh into tribal commanders obviously we'll be doing way more episodes on things like you know tribal synergies probably a lot more episodes on individual tribes i know i want to do things like zombies i know you've got a few things in mind as well yeah i want to do clerics i think i want to have a little look in clerics yeah but, clerics um, are cool man so yeah, yeah clerics are cool. we will be doing a lot more episodes on tribes specifically and we'll probably be talking more in those episodes as well about where we want to see the uh, tribe go where it's been and all that kind of stuff before um other than that guys uh, i just want to say we've had a lot of people getting in touch with us directly through our twitter uh, whether it's dms or uh, just on the twitter page just kind of just generally shooting the shit whether it's about magic or we've had a few people kind of you know talking to us about doing these episodes especially in these trying times like us doing the podcast is really good for us because it keeps us busy keeps our mental health nice and and sort of in a line and we've had people that have very kindly and like we're overwhelmed by it have been telling us that our podcast is is kind of cheering them up and it's helping them out so like we really appreciate it we really appreciate you guys listening and yeah. so in contact with us like I mean, you know, the only other way to say it is like, we fucking love you. Like, we love everyone that listens to this podcast. Yeah, ch- ch- cheers, fam. Yeah, cheers, fam. Yeah. In, in you guys, most, yeah. Us yeah. giving you smiles gives us smiles. So. Yeah, exactly. In the most emotionally repressed way possible. We love you. Um, and if you want to get in contact with us, either to tell us that we're great or to tell us that we suck, um, well, we all need a bit of objective realism in our lives. Like, please do get in touch with us. And we, um, we take criticism really well. Yeah, oh yeah, super well, super well. We won't be throwing our laptops at the walls at all. Um, so there we go. Um, <laughs> guys, we, uh, we don't run a Patreon because uh, of various reasons that we've always outlined in this episode. Um, we might do one in the future, but we don't do right now. So the best ways to support this episode, guys, and we really, we really want your support as well because A, it shows us that we do have people listening uh, and B, it helps us to create better content for you to listen to, is if you're listening to us on iTunes, um, hit that review button. Um, I'm terrible at giving things reviews and I know everyone is because it's a pain in the ass. but um, if you could do it for us that'd be really great <laughs> if you're on iTunes give us a give us a review and five star it will help our show pop up to more people 
share this uh, content with your friends, whether it's old episodes that you're just listening to now because you've joined us recently, or if you've been listening to us for a long time, do share it out with your friends. We know it works because we've seen it happen with our own listenership, so please keep doing so. Um, I'm currently trying to get all my family to listen to it because they have no idea what it is that I do day in, day out with my week, and I want them to be disappointed with a bit of evidence. So there we go. Um, <laughs> and they, can, they can hear what it is. Um, follow us on Twitter. Do hit that follow button. We are holding, uh, so every couple of days, we'll stick out a Twitter poll with a hypothetical question and we've been getting a lot of responses um some of them are great some of them i put out like a negative answer as a joke and then lots of people vote for that answer so the most recent twitter poll nathan i put out um mm-hmm. you don't always see all of them is i put out the drinking buddy who would be the best planeswalker drinking buddy and i mm. put uh gideon i uh, no, i didn't that's a lie i put liliana dak faden xenagos and then the last option i put terrible options so like if people thought oh those are terrible options and they put their own one they could click that one i thought that was kind of self-effacing that one got like a third of the vote <laughs> <laughs> basically we didn't we didn't decide uh, we, our options weren't good enough they were like no, no i was no, like no. oh i opened myself up literally for that response so yeah thanks guys message received um but we do do lots of different twitter polls so please do get involved <laughs> um and yeah just generally guys get in touch we want to hear from you um other than that nathan do you have any final words for this episode no, not really. Um, I've been watching a lot of um, other content as well recently. If you haven't been uh, watching Eight Spice Rack um, and you don't know who that person is, go and look them up because it's oh, really yeah. good, really enjoyable. Yeah, Spice um, Rack is, is pretty cool. He's pretty spicy. Yeah, it makes, yeah, makes, makes, makes me very happy. So other, other than that, man, otherwise keep well. Keep well, do well. The usual nonsense. Absolutely. And with that usual nonsense, guys, as always, thank you very much for listening. We have been Magic the Flavoring. We'll see you soon. <laughs>